All right, Shalom on Israel. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises, honor, glory, respect, and blessings to Yahweh, Bahashom, Yahweh Shai, Bahashom Racha Kadash. Salutations to the Lord's elect on the four corners of the earth, pushing this truth in sincerity while patiently waiting for Yahweh Shai's return. And double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, which have taught us everything we know through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashom Yahweh Shai. And I wanted to draw your attention to an article which I found here on blacklistednews.com. As you see up there, the title of this article is called Governments Start Calling for Price Controls, Rationing and CBDCs Come Next. Now, when they say rationing, they're talking about rationing concerning food. Okay, now we know for years, the government, the United States government has been hiring agents to go throughout the country, burning down food factories, which are responsible for chopping up packaging and processing our foods or, <coughs> you know, of that like manner, you know, a, a lot of farmers, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of farmers have been threatened <coughs> Excuse me, a lot of farmers <clears throat> have been threatened to stop growing crops, to stop farming particular animals. And ultimately, a lot of farmers have been paid to cull their animals, C-U-L-L, -L, cull their animals, which when you cull your animals, that means you kill off a particular percentage of them. <coughs> but the reason why these farmers are being paid, paid to call off their animals um, is because of the, the false pretense of there being a plague or a flu. Like before in the past, the farmers were told to cull over 10,000 chickens under the pretense of there being a bird flu. Now, we all know that if there was a bird flu, it was man-made, okay? And second of all, this whole bird flu madness is, a, is bullshit, okay? And I believe the reason why they came up with this, this false narrative of there being a bird flu is so the farmers can be justified in calling over 10,000 chickens for the sake of systematically engineering in a famine. And by the way, while the government is busy paying off a lot of these farmers to cull their animals. Okay, a lot of these farmers are also, a lot of these, these farmlands, which these farmers own, are being bought up by the US government. And you might ask, why is that happening? Why, why, why is Bill Gates, why is Monsanto buying up all these farmlands? Why is Monsanto a government owned corporation buying up all these farmlands? Well, the answer is simple. OK, the reason why Monsanto is buying up all these farmlands, because ultimately. When hell breaks loose in America, when shit hits the fan. When there's a food shortage. When people can't find any food, when people is starving, when people is rioting, protesting, raging, civil unrest, when all these things are happening, when the people is going to the government for answers, for a solution, 
then the government can be like, oh, well, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you need food. Well, we got food for you. We, we got plenty of food. You know, however, if you want to eat, you're going to have to take a chip. And this is what they want. They want people to go to go to the U.S. government for help. Now, if you're an Israelite, you're not supposed to be going to some damn government. Excuse me. You're not supposed to be going to some damn government for help, period. OK. You know, you're supposed to be going to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and his son, Yahweh Shai, for help. Okay, in a matter of fact, we come over here to Isaiah, right? It says this, Isaiah 31 and 1, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Because that that's what a lot of our people are going to resort to. Especially when they got children who are starving. When they got parents who are starving, brothers and sisters, cousins, nephews, nieces, uncles, aunties that are starving. Of course, a lot of them are going to resort to cannibalism. OK, because a lot of our people resorted to those methods during the time of, of the siege of Titus, when Titus um, went into Jerusalem, you know. When 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 our people was at war against Titus, this was during the uh, the Zealot Rebellion. OK. Uh, um, you know, Titus basically built a wall around Jerusalem. OK, this is when 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 we were living in Jerusalem. OK, Titus built a wall around Jerusalem. And ultimately, this led to a famine. And, and what was going on? within the city of Jerusalem during a siege. Well, there was no food coming into the city and there was no food leaving out of the city. So eventually it led to a famine happening within Jerusalem. And at around that time, the famine got so bad that our people was eating the leather of their belts. They was eating their shoe buckles. They was eating all the leaves off the trees. They was eating all the grass from off the ground to basically the only thing that was left on the menus for consumption was human meat. So a lot of our people resorted to cannibalism, which fulfilled the prophecy of Ezekiel. Let's get that real quick. OK, Ezekiel chapter five, verse 10. And this, this is going to happen again. Ezekiel 5, 5 and 10. Therefore, the fathers shall eat the sons in the midst of thee, and the sons shall eat their fathers, and I will execute judgments in thee, and the whole remnant of thee will I scatter into all the winds. So this happened during the time of Jerusalem, when, when, when Titus built that wall around the whole city. Okay, so um, we're just going to go back here to Isaiah because, see, this, this is going to happen all over again. You know, they, all of our exits and entrances into these cities are going to be blocked off. And if you notice, the only way you can get into a lot of these cities is if you cross a particular bridge. So basically, you know, there's not really too many people who could swim across a whole entire river just to make it to the other side. You know, to to another city, you know, in most cases, people will end up drowning from from their arms getting too heavy, from their legs getting too tired. You see. <clears throat> so there's going to be a lot of bridges. Because martial law is going to be implemented in those days. And there's going to be a lot of bridges. There's going to be a lot of. A lot of highways and freeways to other cities that are going to be blocked off by martial law troops in those days. By MRAPs, by tanks, by barricades, spike strips, you name it. You're not going to be able to just. 
ease your way into another city because your your city is going through pure hell. And you know what that's going to lead to? That's going to lead to a famine building up within a particular city because food trucks are not going to be able to come into your city and deliver foods to your grocery stores anymore, to your corner stores anymore. So it's going to lead to a major food shortage shortage within that city. And the only people the Lord is going to be dealing with within these cities that's going to be undergoing a famine is his elect men. So if you're not of the elect, the Lord is going to starve you out. So woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Because what this is going to do, this is going to lead to a lot of people resorting to running to the government for help. And the solution that the government is going to come with, if you want to eat, is what? You're going to have to take a chip. You're going to have to take a device the size of a grain of rice, which is ultimately taking that device the size of a grain of rice is going to lead to your destruction. It's going to lead right. It's going to lead you right to a nuclear destruction. OK, and these are the times we're heading into where they're going to make this thing mandatory under the penalty of death. They're going to make it the CHIP, the C-H-I-P mandatory under the penalty of death. OK, that's what it's going to boil down to, because at first it's going to lead to people being willing to take it from from pressure being put on them from both sides. Depression, repression, oppression. And it's going to lead to them taking taking a device the size of a grain of rice. OK, and if you take that device, if you take the CHIP, you will be destroyed. And the coming nuclear war. So it says, woe to them to go down to Egypt for help. Modern day Egypt is America, which is also known as Babylon in the Holy Scriptures. And stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. You see that? And this is concerning our people. Okay. They're not looking to the most high Yahweh for help. OK, they're looking to 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 Esau Edom for help. So that's going to lead to their destruction. I'm going to skip down to verse three. Now it says now the Egyptians are men and not Yahweh and the horses flesh and not spirit. When Yahweh shall stretch out his hand. OK, which who's the hand of the Lord? That's Yahweh Shai. So when Yahweh shall returns, both he that helpeth shall fall because during Yahweh shall return, there's going to be a nuclear war. And before the nukes hit this country, there's going to be chariots zapping laser beams on this country and people is going to be getting zapped to powder. And this city is these, this country is going to be set on fire by the laser beams which is going to be coming from what the world calls UFOs. Okay. Now the Egyptians are men and not Yahweh and their horses flesh and not spirit. When Yahweh shall stretch out his hand, when Yahweh shall returns, in other words, both he that helpeth shall fall and he that is hoping shall fall because the ones that's going to receive help from the government, these are the same people that's going to have the chip in them. So he that is hoping shall fall down and they shall fail together. So let's come back over here. OK, so it says here that inflation is not going away anytime soon. But the bigger the issue at hand is who benefits most from the inflation and rising prices. The answer might be obvious to some, but many are oblivious to the root cause of the inflationary dysfunction and often see it, see it as a consequence of random economic chaos rather than a product, product of clever engineering. The truth is banking oligarchs and political authorities revel in inflationary tidal wave because it is a perfect opportunity to institute uh, far reaching socialist controls over resources. So, I mean, that's pretty much all I'm going to read there. With that, I'm going to say Shalom is on to the next one.